Happy, happy Wednesday. It's another hump day. Hopefully you're all having a glorious, glorious Wednesday. But I'm actually a little, a little alarmed, you know. I follow this one person on Twitter. He gives me the skinny on Austin crime. And I tend to pay attention because I live in Austin. I live, I work mostly downtown on the outskirts of downtown. And I live all the way up north. So, I'm on Mopac, so that may have some layer of security or safety because most things are popping off on uh, I-35 and around that area. But I got two stories here. And I blame the city council. I blame our mayor. I blame our DA for not being tough on crime. I get that we're a big city. Maybe maybe that's a medium-sized city, but a bigger city than, than most places here in the United States. But I blame the leadership. I blame the DA for not pressing charges or being tough on crime and only going after cops and white people. Which is leading to a crime wave like I have not seen in a while here in Texas, or at least in Austin, Texas. A Texas man allegedly threatens to shoot people in a gas station with an AR-15 after a clerk denies him free gas. A 26-year-old man has been arrested, actually allegedly threatened to shoot everyone in the South Austin gas station after a clerk refused to give him free gas. Emilio Serrano is charged with first-degree felony aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon for the June 20th incident. So this was two days ago. Interesting. According with the arrest at Defia, APD responded to a gunshot call at a 7-Eleven in the 50th block of West, uh, West Ben White Boulevard, where a man reportedly has been requesting free gas then pulled out an AR-15 when he was told he would have to pay. The caller told police that the man fled east on gold, oh, fled east in a gold Impala. The clerk, who was visibly shaken and crying, told police that the man had entered the store, walked to the counter, and requested $20 worth of gas. Now, it's only $20 worth of gas. I think I would have given to him and called the cops and made and if there's any way to slow the fuel down, definitely do that because it's not worth your life. I get theft is theft, but twenty dollars worth of gas, you're probably making let's say you're making fifteen, eighteen an hour, it is not worth your life. Uh it says the affidavit when the clerk asked if he would be paying with cash or card. The man replied, no, free. The clerk told him they don't give out free free gas. And the man let out the expected and left the store. Okay, he didn't have the gun at this time, which is good. The clerk then saw the man walk into a gold Impala and began rummaging through the trunk and pulled out an AR-15 from the driver's side seat, according to the affidavit. I know I'm pronounced saying that word wrong, affidavit. The clerk then locked the doors. Oh, well, good. The clerk locked the doors and the man approached the store with an AR-15 but was unable to get inside after kicking the door, says the affidavit. The clerk and the patron inside the store hid in the office and freezer. Witness told the police. A man yelled out, said, I'm going to shoot up everyone in there while approaching the store. With the AR-15. How many times are you going to say AR-15? Come on, Fox News. I know you sling a little lip here. The man left the scene with the Impala after realizing he could not get in. Officers later found the Impala and the man in the driver's seat. Imagine the description of the clerk provided by a nearby gas station. Conducted at a felony car stop according to the affidavit. The man later identified as Rao was detained and told the officer he didn't do, you know, your typical, typical uh, ghetto 
speak. I didn't do nothing. I was just trying to get some gas. Officers found a black AR-15 AR in the back of his seat of the vehicle matching the description given by the clerk. Then he was placed under arrest for an aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon. I do have this story right here, which may be the same story, may not be the same story. No, it's a different story. Affidavit. Man pointed a gun and shot at two people near Zilker Park. Court documents showed police received an ominous tip about a man accused of shooting at two people near Zilker Park. I work close to Zilker Park. I'm about, what did I say, two miles away, maybe a mile away, depending on which way I go. So he may have been planning to commit a mass shooting. Now this is a park which is open to the public. When I mean open to the public, there is no security gate to go through them. There is no any way to, to prevent them from going in. Not to mention that there is a playground and there, I think there used to be a train for families to ride. I don't know if that's still on ongoing or not, but either way, Louis Garcia was booked in the Travis County on June 16th and was charged with two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon according to online records. Attorney information for Garcia was not listed online. An arrest showed Garcia assault charges stem from June 12th near incident near Zilker Park. Two victims told police that Garcia has threatened them, pointed a gun at them, and fired two shots into a car door. Ooh. Glad that they're okay. Victims told police they kind of knew Garcia because he attended the same recurring Sunday drum circle at the park. Victims say Garcia approached them with a gun in hand, being verbally aggressive. This must not have been an AR-15 because they're not saying what type of gun he had. According to the affidavit, they were standing behind the driver's side door of the vehicle, which was opened, and when Garcia fired a shot outside the car door, the victim told police. Garcia also pointed a gun in their faces and tried to pistol whip one of them. The victims then ran away from him into the park, according to the affidavit. They returned later to find Garcia wallet on the ground, but he was gone. A few days after the park incident, June 15, affidavit said the police got a anonymous tip that someone named Luis Joel Garcia was planning to commit a mass shooting next Saturday. That's next Saturday, but next Sunday, gathering at the park. At last check of online records, Garcia wasn't charged in relationship to the tip but was charged with aggravated assault with a connection with the June 12th incident. Garcia was arrested as he was getting off the bus on Barton Spring Road. On June 16th, at the time of his arrest, police found a gun inside his bag he was carrying. Court documents stated a search warrant was done at the same day of Garcia's apartment. And the search paperwork showed that the police found a gun and cleaning kit and spent cartilage. I wonder if it was a revolver. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't say what type of gun it was. Just that uh, it was a gun. And I think that's the way that it should be done. Anyways, it seems like the Austin's in the crime. It seems like Austin crime be popping. And that makes me concerned. I think this definitely falls on the mayor. It falls on the city council for not being tough on crime and only being tough on police. Austin's reimagined public safety is a failed policy at this point in time. We know what works and we should be doing what's working. We should be being tough on crime. We should be arresting people. We should be charging people. And we should be prosecuting people. I mean, same thing as charging. The DA needs to be charging these people. Get them off the street. 
deny bail for anybody that has any violent charges. Now, if it's parking tickets, I can see where they shouldn't be behind bars. But still, this weak on crime approach is putting everybody's lives in, in danger. We need to send a message that law and order is, is in play here in Austin. Got to do a show of force to let these monsters know that they don't run the street. The police runs the street. Austin law-abiding citizens run the street. Because if you don't get it in or get it in check now, we're going to turn into a D.C. We're going to turn it into a Chicago. We're going to turn into, I don't know, another crime-ridden city that's full of gangs. And by the way, Austin does have their fair share of gangs. You may not know it. And the police department pretty much killed their gang department because they don't have enough people doing patrols. Hopefully it doesn't take a um, something tragic like Uvalde shooting to change people's minds about the police and city city council. And hopefully our DA starts prosecuting these people. We shall see. Anyways, leave a comment down below what your thoughts are. Smash the like and subscribe button on any and all platforms. Or just the platform that you're currently watching. But most importantly, stay safe and have yourself a wonderful day, morning or evening.